as I just said, tabular method is, is basically an organizer for integration by parts when uh, you know it's going to take a while. Uh, for example, we look here, and don't forget to look for substitution first. But obviously right here, substitution's not going to work. And some of you are saying, well, why can't we make u x squared du then be 2x? Yeah, but then you'd have a du in your angle for sine. And that's not where you want du. You want it left on its own. And if we were to take a look at this one, we do basically want one of the variables to go away if possible. Is either one of those going to go away, x squared or sine of 4x? Yeah, if you've kept taking the derivative of x squared, it will eventually go away, correct? And sine of the 4x, pretty much no matter what you do with that, that's not going anywhere. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we know it's integration by parts, so u has got to be x squared, and we know dv has to be sine of 4x dx. Now, if we did this integration by parts and did it all the way through, we would have to do it several times. And so what I'm going to show you is a nice little table that will set it up for you. What we're going to put here, we'll put the signs meaning positive, negative. That's what I mean by signs. Because let's face it, it's minus the integral all the time, and so that can cause some issues. Right here, we're going to put u, and here we'll put dv. The signs always start off with a positive. Throughout the problem, it may become negative, but that's how this is the organizer. That's how it always starts off. Well, we already said this is x squared, and we already said dv is sine of 4x dx. Normally what I do when I start these problems is I go to u and I keep taking that derivative because that's what you do, right? You need du. Let's just keep taking that derivative until we get to zero. All right. So the first derivative is 2x followed by 2 Followed by? Zero. And that's when you stop. Once you get to zero, just stop. Okay. These signs over here will keep alternating. What I normally do is I just fill it in. So this is positive. So then for this row, it's negative. For this row, it's positive. For this row, it's negative. That's because you distribute that negative through. A negative distributed to a negative becomes positive, so forth and so on. You always start with positive. There could be a negative x squared in here, and then you put the negative in here, and you just it follows through in the derivative. Or if there was a negative sine of 4x, that would follow through in the antiderivative. Yep. This is basically taking care of that negative that could very well get distributed through integration by parts. That's what this takes care of for you. Okay. Which leaves us with, with, unfortunately, the hardest part of this particular problem. If this is dv, what do I have to do to this column? I have to take the antiderivative. And so what we'll do is we'll go up here real quick. That's why I deleted this. Let's take the antiderivative of sine of 4x dx. To do just that part. Close. The only thing we know how to take the antiderivative of is sine of x or sine of u. It's in the angle, you can't just divide it out. Substitution just for that portion. But the 4 we don't have. So are we technically going to end up dividing out the 4? Well, in this case, we are. So divide out the 4. See so yeah, how when we rewrite it, 1 fourth out front. Integral of sine of u to u. Sine of u, we can integrate. And well, the derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative is negative cosine. It's negative one fourth cosine of u, which is. Obviously, plus a constant if we had to write it out, but you don't have to in this particular form. John.
just. Okay, the question was, is it, is it kind of like the opposite of chain rule? And it kind of is. Uh, but the thing is, is you have to remember it. And that's why I always go back to substitution just to make sure I see the pattern, at least for the first one. Same thing with that e to the 2x that we had the other day. There was a huge pattern that we could follow. But the hardest thing is remembering that pattern. So go to substitution first to kind of figure it out and then go from there. Okay, Because unfortunately, we do have to fill this out. We have to do this two more times. But now we know how substitution is going to work. And now we know how that 4 right there is going to affect everything. Right? So what number is probably going to be out front of the next one? A 1 16th. And now we have to figure out then, is it going to be positive? So what's the antiderivative of, say, cosine? It's just sine, right? So what happens with that negative right there that's out front of this 1 4th? Do I flip it or not? Did we get another negative? No. So it stays negative. So antiderivative is sine of 4x. Again, could you have gone and done substitution again? You could have. And we have to do it one more time. Okay, a positive 164th, I agree with that. Because another 4 is going to come out. And remember, we know that antiderivative sine throws another negative on it. Because we just did it here, up top, throws a negative on it. And then it goes back to cosine of 4x. That would be my suggestion to you, what I said earlier. Do the first one substitution, figure out the pattern, and then it makes it quicker from there. Well, that is basically the organizer. Uh, here's where the tic-tac-toe kind of comes into play. It's not quite tic-tac-toe, but it's close. To get your answer, and you're going to be in the way, probably. Put those two together and multiply that all right there. That's kind of the tic-tac-toe that he comes up with. So if I put that all together, multiply it all together, it's a positive x squared times a negative one-fourth cosine of 4x. So it ends up positive or negative? Negative. Coefficient? One-fourth. x squared. Cosine of 4x. That's part one of our answer. Remember how much fun, just think back to how much fun this would have been sitting there through integration by parts, doing it several times, and trying to keep all the negatives and all the stuff organized, especially with all the fractions you would have had out front. Well, what are you supposed to do next, then? Yeah, do the second one. You go over like this, and then you go down like that, and you multiply. So does that end up being plus or minus? Plus. Now, here's where some people get going a little too fast. They just tell me 1 16th, but it's not. It's Why is it 1 8th? Yeah, I've got a 2 up here, right? And then a 1 16th, so it does end up being 1 8th x. Yeah, because the 2 went into the 1 16th. Sine of 4x. We're almost there. Close. 132nd. And now we're really, really close, plus a constant. So you would have had to have done integration by parts twice and then substitution at the very end. A little quicker, a little more organized? I think it is. I had to make you appreciate how to do it by hand first. The only problem with the ones we just did, remember the ones we just had, is you could see that the integrals matched up and you would add it over. You don't get to see the integrals anymore. All you see is the answer to the integral over here. And so is it kind of harder for the ones that we just had? A little bit, unless you have the vision to see when it would actually happen. So this is really good for if one of them happens to go away. This works great. as long as one of them goes away. Mm -hmm. So the other function can flip back and forth, sine, cosine. What if the other one's e to the x? Well, that just can sit there all day and just keep writing e to the x over there. But notice what I chose is the one that went away, where did I put it? For you, because then I take the derivative. Now notice, did I really use this minus down here? No, but I just have people follow the pattern that way. 
because this times zero times whatever, it's done. If you want to, but what I tell people to do is, why don't you put that zero in there so you know exactly when to stop? And then where did I start? Well, I started by figuring out UDV, but once I got to this table, what was the first thing I did? Did I write the signs in? Was that the first thing I did? Yeah, I just kept finding the derivative until zero, because that told me when I could stop. Why don't you take some time, try that one on your own.